In this video, we will have a look at audio encoders. I will first show a simple example of how an audio encoder can be used for dimensionality reduction and compare it with principal component analysis. Then we will see how an audio encoder can be trained to remove noise in an image. Finally, I will show some basic code in Python if you like to reproduce the results shown in this video. Audio encoders are neural networks that can be trained so that they can reproduce as good as possible the data that is given as input. An audio encoder consists of an input layer, one or several hidden layers, and one output layer that has the same number of nodes as there are input nodes. The hidden layer usually consists of fewer nodes compared to the input layer. This part of the network is called an encoding layer, which compresses the data into a latent space with fewer dimensions. Whereas this part is called the decoding layer, which reconstructs the data from the latent space back to the original dimension. Training an audio encoder means that we find the optimal values of these weights, so that the data is compressed in a way to recreate the input values as good as possible. To illustrate how an audio encoder works, I will here use the following dataset, which consists of measurements of the diastolic and systolic blood pressure, the body mass index, and the total cholesterol level of five individuals. We will now combine these four variables into just two, by first using an audio encoder and then see how to do the same thing with principal component analysis. As for all neural networks, we need to somehow normalize this data. I will here standardize the data, but therefore first subtract the means from the values of the corresponding variables, so that we get the centered values. After we have centered the data, the mean of each variable will be equal to zero. Next, we divide the centered data by the sample standard deviation of each variable, so that we get the following values. After we have standardized the data, each variable should have a mean of 0 and a sample standard deviation of 1. Let's put our standardized data up here. We will now train this neural network so that the input values of each person are compressed into the two hidden nodes in a way so that we can recreate the original data as good as possible. As I explained in the basic video about artificial neural networks, we can select between a range of different activation functions for our network, but I will here select the simple linear activation function to simplify the calculations. If you train this network with a linear activation function, the weights associated with input nodes will be optimized to these values. If you multiply the standardized values of the first person by these weights, we will get the values in the two hidden nodes. When we multiply these two matrices, we do the following matrix multiplication. If you'd like to learn more about how to do matrix multiplications, have a look at the following videos on my homepage. If you now multiply the values of the two hidden nodes by the weights that are associated with the output nodes, we can compute the predicted values, which are the values of the output nodes. These predicted values are very close to the target values. In other words, the output values are very close to the input values. This means that if you plug in the input values, the predicted values will be almost identical to the original values. Let's focus on the two values in the two hidden nodes for the first person and place these two values in the following table. Now, let's plug in the values for the second person and do the math and plug in these values in the table. If you do the same calculations for the other three individuals, we will get the following values. 
If we now plot these scores, we can see that person number 5 has a health profile that deviates quite much from the other four individuals, whereas persons number 1 and 2 have similar profiles, which is true also for persons number 3 and 4. By using an audio encoder, we have reduced these four variables into just two. This looks a lot like a score plot we get if you perform a principal component analysis. Let's compute a PCA to compare with. To compute the PCA by using the eigen decomposition method, we start by computing the covariance matrix of the standardized data and then the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. Since we like to combine these four variables into two new variables, we here keep only the first two eigenvectors, which have the largest eigenvalues. If we now multiply these two matrices, we'll get the principal component scores, which can be plotted like this. If we compare the values in the two hidden nodes from the audio encoder with the first two principal components, we see that the two plots are quite similar. In both plots, persons number 4 and 3 are close, which is true also for persons number 1 and 2. We'll now see how the weights are optimized in an audio encoder. To compute the output values or the predicted values for the first person, we multiplied its values by the weights to get the two values in the hidden nodes. Then we multiply these two values by the weights associated with the output nodes so that we got these predicted values. To compute the predicted values for the second person, we plug in its values and do the math. Finally, we compute the predicted values for the other three individuals. We can now use a cost function that could, for example, be based on the mean squared error. The mean squared error is calculated by computing the square differences between the target values, the true values, and the predicted values, divided by the total number of data points. The weights are therefore optimized to reduce the mean squared error, which means that the weights have values that result in as slow differences as possible between the target values and the predicted values. Suppose that we would, for example, change the value of this weight between 0 0.03 and 0 0.04 and calculate the mean squared error for each value. Then we can see that the error function or the cost function changes like this. This function clearly shows where the value of this weight has been estimated to 0 0.0346 because that value results in the smallest error. To find the optimal value of the weights that result in the lowest possible error, the order encoder is usually initialized with some random values of the weights. Suppose that the random value of this weight happened to be 0 0.04. Then we use an optimization method, such as the gradient descent method, where we stepwise move along the direction of the steepest descent, like this. Once the gradient descent method has found the minimum of this function, the optimal value of the weight is 0 0.0346 which results in a mean squared error of about 0 0.000129. We'll now see how an audio encoder can be trained to remove noise in an image. Suppose that we have taken a picture of this number and a picture of this number. An image consists of a grid of pixels. For example, this image has four pixels in width and 5 pixels in height. In total, the image therefore consists of 20 pixels. Each pixel has a certain value that corresponds to its brightness. The values usually span between 0 and 255. In this example, high numbers represent a black color, 
whereas low numbers represent a grey colour and the white background is represented by zeros. If you have a grid with numbers like this, we can create the corresponding image with the software, such as R or Python. A colour image is represented by three layers, or grids, which represent the brightness of red, green and blue colours. The combination of the numbers in the three pixels then gives a certain colour. Since the neural network works best with numbers around zero, we'll first normalize the values by simply dividing all the values in this matrix by 255, which is the largest value, so that we get the following normalized values. Then we flatten the data which means that we stack the columns like this into a one-dimensional array. Next, we plug in the values into a network with 20 input nodes and with, for example, five hidden layers. Then we train this network so that the predicted values from the output nodes are as close as possible to the values in the input nodes. So, if we plug in this image, we will be able to recreate almost the exact same image. But what is the point in doing that? Well, suppose that we add some noise in this image, where we for example set this pixel to 1. And then we train the network where the target values do not include any added noise. The network will therefore be trained to reproduce the same image, but without the added noise. We will now have a look at some basic Python code, which will reproduce the simple results from the first example in this video. And then we'll see how to train a network to remove noise in an image. Okay, so we first import the following libraries and plug in our data. Next we compute the mean and the sample standard deviation of each column so that we can compute the standardized data. Since the neural network is initialized with random weights, you will get different results every time you train your network. To generate the same weights as shown in this video, you therefore need to set the following seed. Then we create a network with four input nodes two hidden nodes, and one output layer with four nodes. Next we create the network, and say that we like to use an optimizer called Adam, and a loss function based on the mean squared error. Then we train the network, where we plug in our input data, and the target data, which is equivalent to the input data. We here run 2000 epochs, so that we can recreate the input data almost completely. After we have trained the network, we can use it to compute the predicted values. Once we have computed the predicted values, we can compute the mean squared error. By using the following code, we can see how the mean squared error has changed during the training process. We see that the mean squared error is almost zero after about 2000 epochs. To compute the values in the hidden nodes, we can create an encoder model and use it to compute the following values. Then we can make a plot of these values, similar to what we had before. Another way to compute the values of the nodes is to first extract the weights from the trained network and calculate the values of the hidden nodes by simple matrix multiplication. To compute the predicted values, we multiply the weights associated with the output nodes by the values in the hidden nodes. I will now show how to train an audio encoder to remove noise in an image by using the classical MNIST dataset, which consists of 70,000 images of handwritten digits. We first import the following libraries and load the MNIST dataset which consists of 60,000 images of training data and 10,000 images to be used for testing the train network. Y consists of a vector that says which digit the image represents. 
To reduce the dataset to bits, we will here extract only the twos. This means that we now will have only 5958 images to train on and 1032 images for testing. Let's plot the first image in the training data. Each image has a height and width of 28 pixels. Next we normalize the data by dividing by 255 so that all values in the dataset are between 0 and 1. Then we flatten the images so that each image consists of a one-dimensional array with 784 elements. Next we add some noise to the images by adding random values drawn from a standard normal distribution. Then we run the clip function where all values below 0 are set to 0 and all values above 1 are set to 1 so that the image only includes values between 0 and 1. With this parameter we can control how much noise we want in the image. Let's plot what the image looks like when we have added some noise. We now build a network with 784 input nodes and 784 output nodes with 7 hidden layers. For example, the hidden layer in the middle consists of 16 nodes. I here use the ReLU activation function and the sigmoid activation function for the output, but note that you can try other activation functions. Then we build and compile the network. Next we plug in the 5958 noisy images in the network and train it to reproduce the same images but without the noise. Then we see how well you can remove the noise in the test dataset, which includes 1032 images. Finally, we plot how well the audio encoder removes the noise in the first 10 images in the test dataset, which seems to work quite well, because we have almost recreated the original images. Remember that we previously created a one-dimensional array of each image, which was used as input in the network. A better way is to use a convolutional neural network to compress the image where one instead uses a filter. I will explain how a convolutional neural network works in a future video, by using the following code that you can find on my homepage. I was able to recreate the original images a lot better compared to using our previous code. This was the end of this video about audio encoders. Thanks for watching.